Yeah, hi guys, it's Frankie again. In this video I'm going to do a bit of an introduction into Scrapebox and uh, sort of the first look around the tool because it's uh, it's quite a powerful tool and it's got a lot of functionality so it may be a bit overwhelming at first but it's really not that hard. So we've downloaded Scrapebox, we've unzipped it and this is what we've got. Um, you'll see that there's several folders um, inside. Uh, what these are, these are all um, just sample uh, files, you don't actually use these, uh, they're just all plain text files, uh, they're, they're uh, in folders based on what they do, so comment poster, we've got our names, emails, websites, and that's just got um, you know default data for you to look at. Um, so yeah, just open these up, take a look, and you'll see what's meant to go in them, but you don't actually use um, what's in any of these uh, files here, they're just simply to show you what to do. So um, all these ones are just uh, sample data. Um, your blacklist, uh, I've done another video on blacklist, so uh, that one there's just a, uh, a blocking uh, list for Scrapebox. Uh, if you see the other video you'll um, learn all about that one. Um, also you've got uh, two files here, Footprint and Scrapebox, so uh, I've got one open here, or I've got both of them open. Uh, this is Scrapebox uh, file, you don't really have to worry about that, but uh, what it is, it just contains uh, your customised settings, so when you shut down Scrapebox and reopen it, um, it'll remember um, all your customizations because um, Scrapebox doesn't make any changes to your computer whatsoever. It uh, doesn't change anything in your registry, uh, nothing. So instead it uses this. So you don't really have to worry about the scrapebox.ini or any file. Um, if you delete that it doesn't matter. Scrapebox will make another one with uh, the default data. And you've got your footprint. and what this is just a plain text file and these are different footprints and you can build a custom footprint library in Scrapebox so if you want you can open uh, your footprint uh, settings file uh, you can delete things out of it uh, you can add things in it so that's what those two are I'll just um, shut that one down and then you've got Scrapebox so we'll get it up and running and here it is so bring that onto the screen this is it you've just opened it um, actually you won't have those in the list that was me barking around so here it is you opened it you'll see over here there's uh, a scroller that gives you the news and that sort of thing you'll you'll have uh, license and so forth down the bottom so we'll go up the top here to the menu system first uh, this one just exit scrape box uh, you've got the tools menu up here um, as you can see there's three um, entries here to do with blacklists um, I've done a video on those ones if you want to um, see that and learn a bit more uh, down here we've got uh, names generator uh, if you want to if you want to sort of make some default names um, for your commenting I'll just download this it says the names list needed to generate it doesn't exist, you want to download it to your computer. Um, that doesn't come with Scrapebox, it's optional. So I'll just download that. You only got to download it once and it's on your system. And that's done there now. And up pops the names generator. And we've got, you know, what's that, half a billion, close to half a billion random names that you can generate. So you can pick male, female, um, the amount of uh, names, so I'll just quickly show you that one. Generate done. There's 300 um, random names, and that's based on uh, I think it's U.S. Census data. Uh, you can save those out to a um, to a file and use them in the commenter. So that's that one. Comes with the built-in names generator. Um, what else have we got? We got port scanner. This is um, really you don't have to take much note of this but I mean if as a matter of interest it will show you the uh, you know the time the IP um, and all the uh, connection data when Scrapebox is running uh, but as I said that's that's not really important to get started um, what else have we got we've got 
and create a desktop shortcut if you want to um, create a shortcut. Uh, next one over we've got projects. Um, I've also done a um, video on the projects but um, that just basically allows you to save the data um, that you've got loaded in the tool. You can you can save and load the whole application environment. So I'll go and go ahead and do that one now. Um, projects demo environment that's loaded. See what that's done here is it's populated um, my uh, footprint keywords, the proxies I last used, uh, everything I had ticked, uh, the URLs in the harvester, and so. The environment means you can save the whole state of uh, Scrapebox and you can save multiple states. So, in other words, if you want to shut down the computer, you've got all your data loaded into Scrapebox everywhere. Uh, you can simply um, save the whole application environment. And next time when you start Scrapebox, you can load the environment and you're back where you started. It's like you never shut down the tool. So, that's what that one is and the poster project will just save the data in this commenter section down the bottom here so whatever you've, whatever you've got ticked whatever you got loaded down there um, you can save and load uh, that option so that's that one um, over here in the settings menu we've got adjust maximum connections uh, when you open up this one here you'll see that uh, there's a number of options for connections and this is how many connections Scrapebox will use at once so uh, if you've got a slow internet connection uh, you can adjust each one down to a lower value uh, if you've got a fast internet connection you can adjust these up so I mean you can sort of tweak this to suit your um, connection uh, same with the timeout setting. Uh, your timeouts, um, how long Scrapebox will wait when it's uh, sort of loading each um, each URL or, or performing a function. So, I mean, if you find you're getting a lot of timeouts, um, you might have it set too low and you have to raise it. But uh, there, your timeout and connection settings it gives you sort of full control over your um, over your connection and um, how it performs. Um, next one down here, you got thorough comment mode. Um, that's for the the commenter, obviously. And with that one ticked, uh, what that will do? That's mainly designed if you're using uh, free proxies that are sort of prone to, um, you know, not working uh, temporarily. Thorough comment mode will uh, attempt uh, three comments on any URL um, if it encounters a failed uh, proxy or a 404. So that just gives you um, sort of more chance of um, successfully uh, commenting. Uh, post only using slow poster. Um, again, that's another uh, option related to 